I'm glad to still have your company here on News Desk. Let's move away from the sanitary, free sanitary pads for a bit. We'll come back to it, though. And let's talk about uh, new guidelines for medi medicine registrations here in the country where the Food and Drugs Authority has uh, adopted. Now, they say the registration will conform to current international standards. And so a two-day training uh, workshop to sensitize the stakeholders of the authority on new trends in medicine regulation has been organized to educate them. The workshop brought together manufacturers and exporters of organized uh, exporters of allopathic medicine. Some of the guidelines which were discussed in included revised bioequivalence guidelines, stability studies, and new variation guidelines. I'm thinking we should just talk about this. Uh, I'm starting not to understand the English, and so we'll talk about this uh, right now. In the studio with me is Eric Ousu, he's Senior Regulatory Officer in Drug Registration Department, and, and I hope we speak English. Yes. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. What are these new guidelines? Uh, basically, they are guidelines that we were already using, but then based on international uh, trend, and uh, getting it to conform to formats that would also be easy for our clients. We decided to adapt some, we decided to review and to add certain few things to make it I mean, uh, easier for so both of us. So then what, what's later. changed? This improved guideline uh, juxtaposed us to the old one? Basically, what has changed, I would first say, is the format, mm. okay? The, the, the contents are the same, technically, but then the format is what has changed. Um, what it means is that when you are registering a product, mm. there are three key areas you look at. You're looking at whether the product will serve the purpose for which it's being cleaned. For example, for malaria, would it be able to do that? Then how safe is it going to be after the person has taken the product? And the third thing is, how are they manufactured in terms of quality? So we look at those two things. Now, all over the world, each country seems to have different way of getting that same information. Mm. Okay? So what it means is, if I'm a manufacturer in Ghana, I want to supply products in Ghana, I come and study Ghana's format, and I prepare a document to see with them. I move to Togo, and I have to change it. So it's also becoming a barrier to access to quality medicines. So we decided that, why don't we harmonize it? Already we had Europe, Japan, and the U.S. that had taken that initiative to come up with a common format, which was making it easier for documents to be prepared and submitted to such regions. So we decided, okay, why don't we follow similar systems so that it becomes easier for both us as the regulators and also the clients who are applying for registration. So technically, it tests the format that has changed so that now what you prepare for the European market, you can easily bring that same document to Ghana. It doesn't make any difference. And you don't have to go through the process again. Is that you what would, you're saying? You, no, you will go through the process. But the format, how you put the document together, because now, more or less, the documents like won't be any different. Different from. So we don't have medicines on the market before we know the FDA is telling us. Exactly, because people are struggling to get mm. your formats. They, they, they have registered the products in Nigeria. They want to come to Ghana. They have to come and study your format all over again and then prepare something which sometimes a bit difficult for them. Mm. So if you go to that um, common format, what it means is that the manufacturer, wherever in the world, prepares one document and you can submit to every um, um, country. So Ghana decided to, to move on that line and we think that it's going to help our clients, it's also going to help us and at the end of the day, the patient who is going to benefit. I have always been curious, when a medicine is brought to or products is yeah. brought to the FDA. What happens to the, the describe to us? I know you've told us, yeah. but describe to us what happens with, with that. Does a person have to bring it to you, or you go to test? Right. Again, it has three arms. Mm. You know, where the product is being manufactured for is important to us. Mm. So we had a team, we have an, a, a section of our um, institution, that's the inspectorate, they would go to where the product is coming from and then go and inspect. Now, the clients bring samples of the product and he add documents to it. When it comes, our laboratory also pick that sample 
they will take you to the lab and analyze. Mm. Then another key aspect is all the data and the studies that the person did on a product before concluding that it's a good product that can come onto the market. That is also submitted and then it's also reviewed by an expert committee. So we put all these three together. We look at the documentation supporting of the product. We analyze the product mm. and then we go to where it is manufactured to also look at how it is done and the environmental condition under which it is done. These three decisions are put together before we can make a conclusion that this product is mm. good and is safe for use. So it is not as though someone brings you a few samples and then... No, no. You it's not a straightforward thing. Yeah. I see. So with this new uh, guideline we are adopting, how long before... Um, a medicine is, is registered here in, in the country because we've had situations where medicine uh, manufacturers or importers have said we, we are we are doing the process yeah. we just put the medicine on the market it doesn't <laughs> mean the medicine is fake <laughs> exactly the, the the point is that until these three decisions as i described to you are concluded uh. I cannot be sure of the quality of the product. Mm. And the manufacturer can also not say so as mm. far as our market is concerned. You can have a good product, but nobody knows. Mm. That's why we have the mandate to determine, say that it is good. So just tell us it's good. And wait for us also to know that it's good. That's the process. So you don't put it out and say, I've started. Mm. That's right. Secondly, you're talking of the, the processing time. I think mm. that's very important to manufacturers because it's business, mm -hmm. okay, and time matters. Now, we have fixed timelines and we give them 22 weeks to complete that process which if you compare internationally is one of the shortest time you will get 22 okay. weeks 22 weeks that's yes. close to a uh, uh, close that's to about three four, months four months approximately mm. yeah and that is the maximum okay what it means that you can get as early as three months however if you interview most applicants they will tell you that no we normally goes beyond that period the problem is that the fact that you have given us a document and all the information does not mean that you get an approval. You submit something to us and start timing, mm. four months. We would have given you the feedback, mm. but maybe the feedback will not be something you expected. You expected approval, mm. but we may come and ask you certain things you did not add to your document in the first place. And I think that's the reason why some of these uh, new format will also be more helpful to but them so that they know exactly what with this new to, process to, to we should time. expect the processing time to be shorter because you don't exactly. then have to put exactly but we are not able to tell it's how exactly. short it would be it's it we we still want to work within the 22, the 22 weeks, weeks but we are sure that uh, with this new format and with the kind of um, education we've had on them with them mm -hmm. we are sure they are going to comply and what it means is that by the time the person submit they can decide they will know that no i think i'm not ready yet to mm -hmm. put it up but when they are set they know and obviously most of them should be able to get it as early as possible within mm -hmm. the 22 weeks. when are we applying this for now we are applying this alongside the old format so we've given ourselves up to fe uh, January 2016 mm -hmm. to restrict it to the new format mm -hmm. because we believe that they also need time to adjust. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's not that easy. So they also have a period to try. Now we've started meeting them. This is not going to be the mm -hmm. last final time we've met them. We're going to meet them again to go into detail so that it will also be easier for them to prepare mm -hmm. their document to shift to that format. It, it comes so for now, mm -hmm. you can come with the new formats mm. some are already submitting in the new format others also want time to do that mm. so if up to 2016 january you can submit in both format both all the uh, new mm. but then from 2016 then we we'll, we'll accept only the new format uh, how are we ensuring that there is proper harmony in understanding this new process i think that's the more we think that the best way to go about is to meet them from time to time pick sections mm. and then take them through. Okay, um, it's somewhat a bit technical actually. So you also need time to move along wi wi with them. And that's how come we're given that long period for mm. them to adjust. And we have series of uh, programs lined out to meet them from time to time so mm. that we'll be sure they are at power with us. Mm. Yeah. I see. But this is only when the medicine comes to you. Exactly. How about when the medicine does not come to you? If the medicine doesn't come to us, then in the first place, we don't know that medicine. And when we pick it up, that's an illegality and we have to deal with the person. Mm. We have a whole department, post-market surveillance. And most of the mm. time, you'll be hearing us releasing statements here and there. What it means is that it's not that people come and tell us, but we have a team that is working out. That is their core business. They are always out on the market. Mm. They are in the shops, they are in the hospitals, we sample. And now we've come up with a platform where 
with their tablets and their phone, the officer on the field easily knows the status of every product he or she come across, and they easily pick it up. So yes, we know we can have a hundred percent tight mm. markets. That is why the PM is arm is also working to mm. make sure that those who refuse to submit their applications to us and still want to put it out will also uh, be picked out when they put the product finally on the market. Question on the street is why do we have to wait for the product to come on the market? People start using. Sometimes the consumers inf have to inform the FDA before action is taken. Why can't we have the action taken when these things are coming in? Exactly. You see, um, that's a fact that sometimes it may get to consumers, unfortunately. Mm. Sometimes it may not get to them, but it will come into the country before we pick them. But the truth of the matter is that all over the world, we can never have a 100% market because you have a number of factors that contribute. For example, in Ghana, if you look at the eastern border alone, I know you have more than 50 unapproved routes. What it means is that people can still get in certain things into the country illegally without anybody noticing them in smaller quantities. However, they might become small, small. By the time we realize it's a pile load of uh, products, okay? So such challenges are there. Now, if product is passing through the approved routes, we are represented at all the approved routes where products can officially come through into the country, mm. and you can't beat that system. People smuggle them in. And I mean, when it comes to smuggle, you and I know that there can never be a time where you would 100% prevent smuggling. Mm. It will get in before you pick it. We think that the most important thing for us to be able to have a system that will easily pick such things out when they get in. And that mm. is why we keep improving and working on our uh, systems to make sure when product sneaks in, we are able to pick them up as soon as possible. Mm. So we also need clients, so, we need so, consumers So sometimes alongside. when the so. products are sneaked in, you, you pick them up before they get to... Exactly, exactly. So, a so number of times. Mm, I yes, see. Yes. But you must, you must uh, gather a lot of intelligence. How do you work with the security agencies? Very Those close, are the borders. Very close. Um, we are very close with SEPs. We are close with the uh, Interpol. We are close with the police. And every now and then, there are a lot of exchange of information and even training among us. The police train us, Interpol train. Just about two weeks ago, we had about 20 of our officers trained by Interpol for about two weeks. Um, we have a system now that they give information, they are letters. Mm. We also, and sometimes the issue is not even only in Ghana. Mm. Sometimes we may have information, pick that letter in China or India, mm. that something is coming in. Then we need to get a letter. So really for now, initially we did, there seemed to be some kind of everybody trying to do it on its own way. But I think now the platform is very mm. good. The collaboration is tight. It's, it's, it's almost time for me to go. So let's wrap up with this one. The, the last thing has got to do with communication after uh, the FDA has identified a particular medicine as not having gone through, or a particular product as not having gone through the approved uh, registration process. The communication then at once is that product is fake. And it's only turned out that that product is in the process of registration. Does the FDA necessarily have to come out to see every product is fake, even before it tests us? It tests the product. No, you see, it's not every product that can be fake. Uh -huh. Sometimes, too, because um, we are technical people, when you pick some, some information out, maybe somebody who is also specialized in communication can hijack your statement and then it will tend to be a different thing. The issue is that it's not every product you pick is fake. The word fake is really a broad word, okay? We are more comfortable saying that the product is not registered than using whether fake, counterfeit. Yes, you can have the product fall into any of those mm. uh, categories, but we are more comfortable saying that we don't know it. We mm. haven't registered it. It could be bad, it could be good, but we don't know it. So I, I, I agree with you, communication is poor, but sometimes you look at how extensive the product has been distributed, then you just know we have to come out you have media to cause fear so and that panic. people can identify the product so they don't use it okay so mm. we are always focusing on the patient mm. there are times that the number of times but product I, I comes out but we FDA don't even come out because mm. you have blocked the product from getting distributed so there's no need to perhaps put the fda has got a little too comfortable with using the word fake um i wouldn't say that i i, I wouldn't say that we are not too comfortable using that. I mean, if you, you can cross-check most of our press statements, we normally don't use the word fake. All Sometimes we use. I wouldn't say we don't use it, but we are very 
cautious in using such words. You know, everything we do, we are operating purely by law. So our laws, our guidelines, you have to work within the confines of that. Words that has been defined in your laws and your mm. guidelines are the ones you play with. Yes. Where, where does herbal medicine fall in this new guideline? Um, for this new guideline, it was purely for allopathic, that's uh, syn synthesized chemicals, uh, not for herbal. However, the, we're also working on the herbal one, but that guideline is not yet ready. The timeline is by end of August, that would also come out. However, there are still guidelines anyway, mm. but we are improving mm. on, on that one to so sort of widen the scope. So even if this herbal medicine is foreign, it still does not go through this new guideline? No, it, it doesn't it, it fit. The things through. you look for are quite are different. Are different. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, too. Eric Ousu is Senior Regulatory Officer in Drug Registration Department with the Food and Drugs Authority. Now I want to read a few of your messages. Um, uh, I'll start off with K. Uh, perhaps not. I'll start off with Patricia Elinyan. Patricia says that teachers without salary, students with scholarship. And K.O. Forieje says, oh really? After blowing up to $20 million in two World Cups of which that money cannot be accounted for, now what do we have? Money for parts? What are you? I bet the majority of the money will go into their pockets. Mahama, please don't forget. We the guys do have personal hygiene stuff to take care of. Tell your people to add shaving sticks for us. Um, we'll go to Pipi Osiwa Jr. who says, I don't know what is hunting this nation. Are we dreaming or it's serious? I'm sad for the future of Ghana if that is how things will be for the rest of our days, Mr. President. And then we have Nana Kwame Eninfo says, saying that I think this, this sanitary pad issue is a step in the right direction because at the moment, Ghana is bleeding profusely. So, that, wow, very, very, very cynical. <laughs> anyway, but I'm going to finish it though. He says, so the pass will help soak the blood, misplaced priority at the highest level. Very, very sarcastic. Tina Tenbo says, it's appalling that parents don't have enough money to buy their daughter's sanitary wear, a basic but essential need. And then Patricia comes again, she says, please, uh, pres President, get some, uh, well, 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 and Samiro says, you guys should educate the public the real reason behind the loan and stop your mischief. I'm not sure uh, what you're talking about. I think we've had our education with Bright here. But Godwin or Darkway France says, sanitary parts manufacturers have hit a jackpot. I believe those parts will be imported as well as a clause attached to the loan. Caleb Osei says, I believe you, you get what you sow and reap what you germinate. So if Parliament has approved this, how much more the people who brought the idea in the first place? Meanwhile, Ni Doduanti says, It amazes me some of us, the full power government, seem to be committing on daily and regular basis. Interventions, yes, but what is this? Education is at its lowest. These are people or the human capital we are preparing to take over to be competitive internationally, think outside the box, think critically to solve the myriad of problems we have. I can now understand some few things. Ah. Well, then I'll end with Abdul Aziz. Abdul Aziz thinks the Joy News is not being fair in reporting the story. You just want public attention. Please, next time, put the whole truth for us. Anyway, that's what Abdul Aziz thinks. You can keep sharing your thoughts with us uh, on facebook.com forward slash join us on TV or kimini.amano on Facebook. I tweet at kimini anytime, any day. I'll share your thoughts uh, when I'm on the air. But it's time for me to go. My name is Kemini Nyamani Amano. At midday, we'll delve more into the free sanitary pad matter. All news today. Good morning.